Welcome to the Three Knockdown Rule. Starring Mario Lopez and Steve Kim. Presented by Hustler Casino and UFC Fight Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, the three knockdown rule is in effect. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Mr. Manhattan, Mario Lopez. This show presented by UFC Fight Pass. Welcome back. Thanks, buddy. I was missing the monikers. I'm glad you're back to your uh, normal self. Feeling a little rough. Based uh, coming off the heels of the New York weekend and, and the golf tournament, which we will we'll yes. get into a little bit uh, later. But uh, shout out to uh, Smoking Tim Frazier and uh, Tino, Tino on the edits. Yeah. All right. Big show planned. This is the bout sheet for this week's program. We review Taylor Lopez. We have a talk with WBC Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Regis Pro Gray. Fight review, fight preview, ask Mario, and final flurries. But first, we must tell you that the three knockdown rule is brought to you by Hustler Casino. It's our favorite local LA casino. Pie gal poker. All the big stuff. Baccarat VIP table and home of the most popular poker live stream in the world. A Southern California staple since 2000. And, you know, you mentioned my hair and how good the wig is looking. But just in case you're not this lucky, what, what do you do, Mario? What you can be done? You know what? You go see my boy Oscar Lopez. No relation from Scalp Micro right here in L.A. They offer a unique and innovative hair loss solution for men because not everybody wants to get threaded or uh, start taking pills. They basically focus on a pigmentation known as SMP. And it replicates the exact shape and size of hair follicles by tattooing tiny particles mm. of pigment into the scalp. And it sort of gives the illusion of hair. But it looks bomb, especially if you keep your hair short. And you can see results as little as one treatment. They create and restore hairlines, make it look more dense, especially if you're thinning. And if you rock it close crop, they'll really hook it up for you. And it can camouflage burns or any kind of skin conditions you have. Anyway, Scalp Micro LA uses the highest quality tools for its procedures. So... <clears throat> If you're you're starting to lose it, uh, and you're looking for a new look this summer, call our homies over at Scalp Micro. Mention this ad for a free consultation. Good luck. Yeah, because if you're getting thin, we'll help fill you in. All right, anyway, let's get started. Round one. Round number one <laughs> from the theater at Madison Square Garden this past Saturday night on ESPN. And the new junior welterweight mm. champion of the world, along with the ring magazine belt and the WBO strap, the takeover. It ain't over. Teofimo Lopez with a 12-round decision over Josh Taylor's. Your scores, 115-113 twice and 117-111. Mr. Lopez, the rumors of his demise were greatly exaggerated. So, a couple things. <clears throat> Excuse me, before I get into the fight uh, itself. First of all, East Coast, with all due respect, I feel really sorry for you. Those fights start so late over there, Kim. By the time I got out of there, bro, it was... I had to catch a flight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> exactly. We are so spoiled out here in the West Coast. You don't realize it yeah. uh, when those cards aren't starting, starting, mind you, until 9 p.m. Mm. So, you know, you're getting out of there 1, uh, 1.30 in the morning. Maybe I'm just getting old, but mm. it's just it, everything happens so much later out there. Funny story. As I'm approaching Madison Square Garden... I'm I'm looking and I'm saying I'm seeing a guy arguing with this hot dog vendor, and I said, "Is that Tio's dad, Junior? Is that Junior right there?" And I said, "Oh God!" I said, "Junior." And he turns, "Oh Mario, what's Mario. up, bro?" He goes, "Hey, bro." He goes, "I don't have my wallet. I'm trying to get a give hot me a dog. couple dollars, bro." And that's exactly what he said. Can you give me a couple dollars to buy a couple hot dogs I haven't eaten? I go, uh, "Yeah, no problem. I'll get your hot." I go, "What were you planning to do if I wasn't here?" He goes, "I was trying to convince the guy that my son's fighting and to hook me Yo, up." Yo, bro, my son's the greatest <laughs> fighter ever, bro. I, I said, "You got an hour and a half to your son's at the main event. You're out here getting street meat, you know?" And it's done. I said, "No problem." So I, my buddy happened to shoot it. It was the funniest thing I yeah. posted. It. So I hooked him up, and uh, he got a couple hot dogs. He was on his way. But it was sort of a indication of what was to come. He was so relaxed yeah. and so loose having this huge moment headlining this card that his son was about to be in. I can't imagine because when my son's about to wrestle, I'm like a nervous wreck. But he was so relaxed and so cool. And so was his son yeah. when he went into the ring. That's what I was so impressed by. When I saw um, Josh Taylor come into the ring, I was like, whoa. My guy looked huge in there. And I was lucky enough to be front row right there, sitting next to- I saw that. I think you had Clarissa Shields' tickets. But anyway, keep going. Yeah, I was sitting next to Bill Haney, not Lee Haney, but <laughs> Bill Haney, Devin Haney's dad, and uh, Joe Pitaro, president of ESPN. Great guy. Um, 
And when it was the theater, is if you ever get an opportunity to see a fight there, intimate, loud, it's cozy, so, so so cool. Yeah. It was great. But I saw Josh come in. My guy looked fantastic, big, really healthy, not drawn at all, um, but very very focused. And even in shadow boxing, those combos look really sharp. He also said he had uh, one of the best camps ever, and 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 he was prepared and ready to go. When I saw Tio come in, loose, having a good time, smiling, relaxed, I almost thought, oh my gosh, <clears throat> is he a little too loose? He went in there, Kim, and I don't know if it was just me, but he didn't look like he had necessarily a particular game plan. Mm. He looked like he was just fighting off of instinct, using his reflexes. And feel. And feeling it out and timing him. You're not supposed to be able to do that and be successful against a caliber of fighter like Josh Taylor. A lineal, undisputed, undefeated world champion. And after the first couple of rounds, because the first round I go, uh-oh. I saw the size difference. I saw that southpaw stance. I saw how Taylor was being active. I said, ooh, this could be a long night for my boy Teal. And then he quickly started making adjustments, started countering with those sharp uppercuts, yep. those quick hooks. He wasn't even jabbing Kim. He was going in there, overcoming the height deficiency, the reach deficiency, and he didn't start going to the body until later. I feel if he would have gotten to the body earlier, I think it would have stopped him. Once he did, he started to hurt him, and he started to go there a lot um, sooner. Tip of the cap to Taylor, who took some hard shots, hard shots, but never was Teal, I felt, not in control, not in command. He had the ring generalship, and my guy looked better mm. than ever in convincingly beating Josh Taylor, where those scorecards were way too close mm, for mm, me, mm, mm, way mm. too close for me, but I was mm. like, wow, that was a masterpiece of a performance for a guy who I felt didn't necessarily have a real game plan, just off of pure counters and giving up all those uh, deficiencies mm. defensively, I was really, really impressed. His mind looked clear, and Taylor started to fight, I don't want to say dirty, but started to rough it up in there. Teal never got rattled, never retaliated, never hit. He got, he got hit behind the head. He got hit while he was down. He got hit low. He got Taylor was making it a fight, and maybe he was a little frustrated, or maybe he wanted to um, have the fight more brought to him. But the way Teal composed himself, handled himself in the ring, and was able to react, I was thoroughly impressed. Bravo. My guy is on top of the world. Same point he was when he beat Loma. I don't know if you saw this, but when Teofimo came to the arena, he had a shirt that had Bruce Lee on it. And what did Bruce Lee say? Be like water. Be like water. Be formless and shapeless and yep. be adaptable. And that's what he was. Yep. That's the kid that I was so high on. And I thought he fell into a trap, Mario, the <clears> last <throat> couple of years when he struggled of looking for that perfect punch and trying to score one-punch knockouts instead of letting the game come to him. When I first really started to be high on him was his third or fourth pro fight. It was on Telemundo and Top Rank would farm him out to Tudo Zavala shows. He looked like young James Tony or Floyd Mayweather with that ability to use your motion against you and run guys into punches. That's what he did. And in the eighth round, when he started shaking and shimming and dancing and strutting around, I said, oh, he's having fun. You could just sense like he felt it. And I don't know if you saw this, but in Taylor's corner around the fourth or fifth round, he was looking up at his trainer, Joe McNally, and his eye said to me, I, I can't figure this kid out. Mm. This kid's better than I thought. I don't know what's going on in his personal life, but right now he is mastering me. This is a factor. I don't know if it really mattered, but I do it's a, think it's a variable. Teofimo Lopez in the last 10 months had three fights. See how sharp he was? See how concise he was <clears throat> in his movements and his reflexes? Josh Taylor, first fight in 16 months. I think he may have overgrown the weight, and he looked a lot like a guy who had corrosion. I'm going to respectfully disagree with you, and I know you were talking about this a lot in Twitter, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, in talking to, in, to Josh, who, by the way, class act, handled himself like a complete mm -hmm. gentleman, and post-fight gave him all the props, had, had no excuses, went to his dressing room afterwards. I, I became even a bigger fan. And then I like the way Teal handled himself, too. That was a nice, yeah. gentleman, classy thing to do. The reason I <clears throat> excuse me disagree is because, look, Taylor had like a murderer's row of fights uh, pr prior to it, okay? Uh, or in, on his resume prior to um, Lopez. He beat who's who, cleared out that division, and looked good doing it. I know with Catterall, maybe it was just a bit of an off night and what a lot of people thought he lost that fight. But sometimes, Kim, I think when you fought so long, I think when you achieve a certain status and you're at a certain level, I think the rest, you give your body a rest, I think that's actually really healthy 
I really do. Look at Sugar Ray Leonard. After Even though he's he only had 20 total yeah. fights. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why, though, but it's not like the guy. It's not like you don't know how to fight. That's my point. You had Sugar Ray Leonard coming off years in beating a Hagler. He you had ain't John, Ray Leonard. Well, listen, he's hold, not that hold good. Hold on You had John Jones. I think he is that good. You have. I you think, think you're Ray Leonard hold and Josh Taylor hold at on the same level. No, no, really. no. Not necessarily. But you said no, he's not No, not necessarily. That, not at all. Not at all. No, not at I agree all. with that. But. I think he's really, really good. Look at the people he's beat, Ken. He has, but... He has, okay, hold on. Let me finish. Look at the people he's beat. My point is this. I think when you know how to fight, and when you're already there, sometimes, and you've been fighting a long time, I think it's okay to give your body a break. I'm not saying it's the, it's the wisest choice, but I'm saying I don't factor that in too, too much to why he lost. I really don't. Because I think he did look sharp. I think he was when he told me he was in his best camp. I think you're discrediting Teal by saying no, it's because just of that. stating a fact. No, I know. Yeah, listen, could it have maybe? Maybe. You, maybe you, hold on a second. Hold on. I'm not done. Maybe. He could have looked a little sharper, or maybe that little uh, uh, break in his body did do him some good, or maybe Tia was just that damn good. Well, My point is, look, John Jones, another example, came off three years, beat Ghana, so I don't necessarily put that. If you're at a certain level and you know how to fight, you know how to fight. I just think that we had a T.O. who was very focused and disciplined and went in there and um, fought a, a spectacular fight, and Joshua was also... Uh, um, focused just it wasn't the better man that night that's honestly what i think okay that's your opinion and my opinion is this you either sharpen the blade or it gets dull there's no gray area to me anyway Growing as a uh, fighter yes um well i've talked to enough trainers and fighters that agree with me but you're allowed we're allowed to disagree no no no. look i'm not I mean, saying i'm not saying you're wrong i'm just saying oh i know I, i'm not listen but, I know at, the, but at the same time I don't, <laughs> no but at the, no but at the same time kim at the same time look I, I, there's i just gave you examples and taylor's not as good way. as those guys you mentioned it doesn't have to be as good it's not about it's as not good, even but close. he is but he is good and you can't diminish him and you're not gonna say taylor wasn't the best 140 oh he was at one time three years ago okay but from the catterall fight to this this fight, I've seen decline. Uh, Mauro, you were there for the Xander Zayas fight. He goes mm. to 16 and 0, clear cut, 10 round decision <clears throat> over Ronald Cruz. Actually, an eight round decision. I'm very high on Xander, but I will be honest with you. He's only yeah. 20, and I know he's got to get his man strength. I don't see his power growing with his maturity. I want to say one thing before we move on that I didn't get to say, and I, I did. I just think it needs it needs to be said. Look. Tio now, before we, we move on from him, he's the one guy who legitimately beat Lomachenko, convincingly. There's yes. no controversial. There was with Salido, there was with Haney, obviously. He's the one guy that beat. And then he was an underdog going into the Taylor fight who, regardless of what you think about him, he was a good fighter and he was a much bigger man. He was an undefeated man and he was the um, lineal champion. He really made a statement on that night. I don't think enough can be said for, and we always say we don't know where this kid's head's at. And it seems, I don't know what these distractions, his first comment was about the next battle is in divorce. So maybe he's, he's Pacquiao. <laughs> well, maybe he's Pacquiao in the sense that a lot of the drama and all that he's able to tune out and just kind of focus, which is tough to do. But I also feel like we, he's the kind of fighter that rises to the occasion with a caliber of opponent and then maybe... If it's, a, if it's not as big of a threat or guys he's supposed to look good against, he might fight down to him. Do you feel that's a sense too? I agree, but you know what the great fighters do? They fight at their own level. Well, I agree. I'm just saying, he, do you I agree mean, that he's that type? Yes, but consistency is a mark of greatness. I'm as high as Tia Fimo as anybody. I started the bandwagon, mm -hmm. but I know what it is. There will always be turmoil with Tia Fimo. That's my point. That's just what it is. Yeah. So he's going to have to find a way to be a more consistent exactly. fighter. With that said... I just wanted to make that point. I know he's lineal, and I know he has the biggest victory because Josh Taylor was the man who beat the man who beat the man. But that that necessarily make him number one yes. at 140. It Absolutely. does. It beat the man who beat the man. Absolutely. Over Pro Gray? Absolutely. And I like Pro Gray, and you know I like Pro Gray, and I think Pro Gray would agree, too, even though he thinks he's— It doesn't make you the best. I'm not saying the best, but it makes you the man. No, but I'm saying— but That's what you, I'm would saying. Would you rate him the best fighter, though? I'd rate him number one right now because he'd be— Yeah. It's Taylor beat Pro Gray, didn't he? Yeah. And he beat Taylor, didn't he? Well, then he's number one. Uh, Mario, Xander Zayas, is something missing? Because he's got a lot of things that he checks a lot of boxes. But I'm just wondering, has he kind of stalled in his development? Even though he looked good, I, I, his power is just not there Well, right listen, now. he dropped him in that first round. I thought it was going to be a short night. I think a lot of credit has to be given to uh, my boy, who yeah. I say a well card at the time. His name it, it escapes me. But uh, he's tough, and he came back, and he was able to, to last the distance. But remember, he dropped him in that first Ronald round. Cruz. Yes, tough Cruz. Guy. He's a tough guy. Tough guy. Props to him. Um, dropped him with that right hand. And uh, in the first night, I thought it was going to be a short one. And he put nice combinations together. I didn't see him get caught too much. I don't know if it's 
he's still young and that man strength hasn't gotten there yet. Still just 20. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so well. maybe the man strength hasn't gotten there yet, but he's, he he looks like a sharp little disciplined fighter who's has got his fundamentals there and he knows how to use his length. Very promotable, got a good head on his shoulders, and some of the same things that happened to Felix Verdejo or Juanma Lopez will not happen to him. He's a very grounded, young, mature individual. I think he's got a high ceiling. Yes, I like him. Just want to see a little bit more. All right, when we come back, a word from our sponsors, and we're back with the WBC Junior Welterweight Champion of the World on the Championship Hotline, Regis Pro Gray. Catch the streaming live right on YouTube. Right on YouTube. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. $1.2 million. Oh! oh. losing in this fucking game. What the fuck? This is a 400k flip. If I win by the way, you get 10 grand. Come for my fucking straddle! For my fans! What? Watch out. It twice. Wow! <laughs> All in in a call. I'm not fucking leaving! Raise it up! All right, joining us right now on the championship hotline on the three knockdown rule is the WBC Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Rougarou Regis Progre, who this Saturday from the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans, takes on Danito Zoria. Regis, thank you for joining us. First question, let's go back a little bit. This is now part of a new promotional contract with Eddie Hearn mm -hmm. and Matchroom Sports. I know you were a free agent after your win over Zapata, had various mm -hmm. offers. Why did you take this one from Eddie Hearn? It just felt like I was more of a priority with Eddie. That's all. You know, with, when I was, um, you know, I, I met with Todd Rank, I met with Todd DeBuff, and then that... You know, like, so Ty DeBuff, you know, with Ty Rank, they flew me out there. They, they flew me to Vegas. And, um, you know, we had a meeting. It was cool. But then Eddie actually, Eddie met me in Houston. You know, he came to Houston. He came to sit with me. We we ate dinner and stuff like that. That was right before the, the Canelo fight. That was Monday. And um, Canelo fought on Saturday. So he stopped in Houston just to meet with me. So it just felt like in just the deal was just an overall better deal. Um, And I felt like it was better priority. I was more of a priority. I felt like with the top rank deal, I would just be, they would just put me in there. You know, I'll be, I'll be somebody in there. But with Eddie, I am one of the only U.S. champions. So it's, it's just feel like more, I'm more of a priority. So with this deal, though, and I've read this, and, and you can confirm for me, you don't have to give up the money. It's not our business. But are mm -hmm. there provisions in terms of activity within a specified time frame? Yes. I, it's three fights in a year or like 14 months or something like that. Yeah. That's great, man, that you that you want to stay active. We know you stay in the gym. Um, What are your thoughts on this past weekend and the Taylor uh, Teofimo fight? Teal looked great. Teal looked good, man. He made Taylor look, you know, he made Taylor look average. He really did. I mean, um, you know, I, I that's I mean that's really all I can say about Tio. Look, you know, Tio looked real good. He looked, you know, he looked focused before going to the fight. I actually I thought that Taylor was I really thought that Taylor was just gonna win easily, big, and then he just he definitely proved me wrong. Like I think most of the, most people. Yeah, I I agree with you too because he he said he was coming off of uh, uh, what was his best camp and he looked really uh, big in there and actually after the first round I was like uh oh but then uh, Justin's parade and timing was figured out and it was a, it was a fun fun atmosphere I happened to be sitting next to um, Lee Haney I believe Devin Haney's dad. Uh, there, who was Bill Haney? Not Bill Haney. I'm sorry. Lee Haney. Lee Haney. Lee, Lee Haney. Haney. Lee Haney. <laughs> Lee Haney is like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. There is a Lee Haney, but he's a Mister Olympia. That's right. I knew the one exists. Anyway, not him. Bill Haney, uh, uh, Devin's dad, who's talk, who told me face to face that he, uh, he just can't seem to make a lightweight anymore. He's going to he's going to be moving up and and um, obviously had a, a great run there. What, what do you think are the realistic chances of you uh, facing Dev Devin Haney? And how do you like that matchup stylistically, Regis? Uh, I love it. I mean, I love for me, bro. I feel like any fight. I feel like I'm the best at one for it. And I feel like, you know, you put me in front of anybody. I feel like I'm going to beat him. Um, I just feel like after. After Devin's performance against Lomachenko, well, just let like saying this with the shots he got hit with, with, by with Lomachenko, I feel like if I hit him with those same shots, it's gonna be a different outcome. That's all. <laughs> Regis, what I found interesting is that, and I, and I wanted to get into this with you. I have never seen a fighter, this being you, who's been avoided by a whole stable of fighters, and all of those fighters are at top rank. A lot of them are managed by Rick Morigian. <laughs> was that a factor in you not signing with them? Because even if you put your name on that contract, doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be willing to fight you regardless. 
Yes. Um. So the deal, I can, I can, I guess I give some of the details. So the deal was, um, you know, I think the first fight was supposed to be like Barboza, and then it was it, it was going to be like uh, I think Ramirez, and then maybe like a Tio Taylor. But you know, for me, what I understand, all right, Barboza, you know, he's you know average and stuff like that. But Ramirez, I I think from what I understand that he has like one more fight in the contract. So if say if I do go over the top rank. I might he might go over somewhere else. You know, I don't know. I really I don't know. I don't know how it how it would have went. And then, you know, with with Tio, you know, after he just said he's retiring and then they say he might have one more fight in the contract, too. So, you know, they, they telling me these names, but those names might not even be there. So it's like, why would I, you know, go that way and say these names? But those names really might not be there. You staying uh, active or wanting to stay active is is fantastic and refreshing to hear. I, I should mm-hmm. say, how, how difficult is it for you to uh, to make one forty, Regis? And how much longer do you do you uh, plan on staying there? I feel like I can, I can stay there honestly the rest of my career. I'm, if people don't know, I am older than most of the division, but I'm 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 making it easier now. Be I had nutrition. Uh, nutrition is about. Um, maybe like three fights ago. Well, this is my third fight with him, but I did a mock camp before because at first I really thought like, man, it's time to go up to 147 because I was doing the old way. I was sitting in the sauna, wearing sauna suits, running jump rope, doing all that type of stuff. Then I was like, man, I missed weight twice. And so the second time it was the Ivan Red catch fight and the it was a catch weight at like 143 and I still didn't make the weight. And so mm-hmm. I was like, man, like something is going on. Like either I need to let's let's hire nutritionists and see if I need to make some changes. And I did it. And man, I got the 140. And this was we did a mock camp. I didn't have a fight or nothing like that. We did that camp and literally he got me to 140 in like 10 days. Wow. And <laughs> like after I was I was I was out here in New Orleans. I was with if you know I don't know if you saw the Duran with the the video with Roberto Duran, but I was out here eating with Duran and stuff like that. And then I came back, I was heavier, and he I got to the weight in like ten days, and so less than two weeks. And I know, like, all right, it's real. So I can, man, I've been I've been making forty easier and easier. So wow. you know, obviously, I'm in camp right now, and um, the way in is Friday. So you know, I'll let y'all know, you know, how it goes. How's your energy level? Well, with the cut and stuff. I, I feel good. I feel way better. Like with the nutrition is, I, I think one thing I, you know, what I want to tell, like, um, you know, the boxes coming up is like investing yourself in because the science is all is different. Like back in the day, you know, with the old school trainers, they would, you know, give you a grapefruit or give you an egg or something like that and then make you sweat and do all that stuff. But, you know, that's not that's just not the right way to do it now with the science and stuff like it's proven. This is the this is the right way to do it. So my energy feels good. I mean, I'm still training two times a day and my, like I said, energy is good. My mood is better. Usually when, you know, usually when you um losing weight and you hitting the sauna and you, you got to do all that stuff, your mood is terrible and cause you can't eat, you, you hungry, you thirsty, you miserable. But now I, I mean, I feel good. I'm smiling all the time. I'm, it's just way better. Yeah, and smart, Mar- very smart and mature approach. And you're right. Most more uh, fighters should invest. And Mario, in he a public run with the public. Some of the fans that came out today, everyone want to road work with me in New Orleans. And, Rocky and, and, style? Ro- Rocky style, yeah. Went up to Paris style. <laughs> Rocky style, yeah, yeah, yeah. And let, me, yeah. Okay, let me tell you something about New Orleans. One of my favorite cities uh, in the country and the best food, man. You eat well. So trying to trying to make weight there <laughs> yeah. with all that damn good food, I'll tell you what, that's a struggle. That's, that's <laughs> Regis, I was there several years ago when you made your homecoming. And I remember Teofimo Lopez was the co-main. Uh, it was a decent mm-hmm. little event. What's the buzz like for this upcoming Saturday against Zoria? It's, it's been crazy. I mean, now, like, we have a, a, a list of celebrities. They all come into the fight. Um, just the people they 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 behind me way more, you know. Like for the runs, we that was the second run we did. We did one um a little early in camp, and we had a good turnout. And last night we had a good turnout. So it's just like everywhere I go, people like they keep talking about the fight. So um, we should have a good crowd. And like I said, we got a list of celebrities coming, and um, I think it should be a good night. That's great, man. I'd love to see uh, a great fight take place uh, outside of, of Vegas, especially in fighters' uh, hometown. Are you still working with Julian Chua? Because I remember the last fight was a little yes. bit. Um, uh, uh, you wouldn't say, but he was training both y'all. Little conflict, like, little yeah, conflict. No, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But that which which I respect. Yeah, you know, and uh, I believe is Julian out there. He's coming Thursday, he's so coming he worked. Thursday. Oh, that's we great. worked. Um, yeah, he's coming Thursday. Smart we, young guy. We like worked together last week. 
yeah, we were sparring, like with sparring and stuff like that. He stayed at my house and, you know, we did a lot of drills and stuff. Um, but yeah, he's, he had, he has a fighter. So he had to go back to, um, California. And then he's, um, he's coming back here Thursday. Got it. Got it. You plan on next camp coming out to LA at all? Because I think I think you were at Brick House a couple times, right? When you were, uh, when you yeah, were, of course, right? of course. I, you know, I go back and forth, man. The thing is, like, so my last camp was the paid. I always come to LA to train. You know, I always right. start my first two weeks off in LA, and I, I train at Brick House. But you know, my last camp, I couldn't come out there because I was the paid. Because I really just come to LA. I love first off, LA is like my sec behind the walls. LA, LA, my second favorite city in the world. I love LA. You know, I really love LA. So I like to come out there, get the vibe, get in the mood and stuff. And then I train. I go out there and train with Julian. But my last camp, obviously, I couldn't train with Julian because of, you know the whole thing was a pay. So I was like, man, let's let's see how it work in New Orleans. You know, I have um like housing and stuff out here, so it's way easier, it's cheaper, it's way easier. So you know, we all came out here, and you know, the pay the Zapata fight was the it was a success. So we was like, all right, let's do it again. So we came back out here for this camp and it's, it's been good. So, um, I, I'm same thing. I'll be back and forth between I, my, my three cities. I'm, I'm back and forth is, is I'm in Texas and Houston and New Orleans and, and, in California and LA. All right. Well, like Randy Newman, he loves LA and that's Regis pro gray who on Saturday mm -hmm. on the zone from the smoothie King center in new Orleans takes on Danito. Zoria. Regis, thank you for the time. Appreciate you as always. Thanks, Chan. No problem, man. Good luck to you. No problem, man. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back on the three knockdown rule after these commercial messages. And we're back on the three knockdown rule on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, again, just a friendly reminder that if you want to sponsor our show, you should go to info at boxbid.io. And if you want to get involved with the three knockdown rule, again, reach out, email info at boxbid.io. Boxbid.io is an online platform that is launching soon that helps public figures and professionals in the world of boxing get sponsorships. We are proudly working with boxbid.io. Review preview. Now we go to the fight review, fight preview. A lot going on Saturday from the zone in Ontario, California at the Toyota <laughs> Arena. This is one of the fights of the year. Jaime Munguia ekes out a decision over Sergei Derevchenko. It's one of those fights, Mario, I like to say. Great for us. Kind of bad for Jaime. Man, he got banged up. <laughs> Man, I'm pissed. I missed that fight. I was obviously at a very completely... Um, I was at a different fight, which is a completely yeah. different style. But, but damn, what a hell of a great weekend Chingasos. for, for fights. Chingasos, oh, yeah. that must have been so much fun to see in person. And it was great to watch on uh, TV when I had to do it in two parts. More on that later. But here's the thing. Before we break down the fight, anytime Mugia wants to fight, I, anytime Mugia is, is going to fight, I want to watch it. That's some exciting TV-friendly uh, action right there. Derevchenko, my guy's got balls and comes to fight. He looks strong. He looked determined. He uh, was not there just to collect a paycheck. And from the first round, Kim, chingasos were thrown. Boom! He hit him with those hard right hands. Munguia can take a punch. Derevchenko can take a punch. And it was back and forth action. Honestly, could have gone either way until the 12th round. And I think that knockdown was the one that solidified it um, and was able to uh, uh, get the W uh, in my eyes. But, man, it's one of those fights that flew by. And you're like, oh, I can't believe it's over because the action was was nonstop and relentless. And it must have been – you weren't there in person, right? No, I was watching both on the double screen. And a couple notes here. This is the irony. Q Alanis. Derevchenko's team turned down an offer to make yeah, this a 10-rounder. 10 10-round fight, exactly. Guess what? With that knockdown, when you have two scorecards of 114-113, that 10-8 swung the fight for Munguia. Huh. The one thing with Munguia, you're right, we should just appreciate him for what he is. He's never going to be a stylist. He's always going to frustrate us. But I thought he showed low boxing IQ in this fight because I thought when he used his length and was unfurling that long jab. When? They held, well, hardly. That's the problem, yeah. He actually had safe harbor. Absolutely. But every time he hurt him, he needed to have the discipline to say, okay, stay hurt, but I'm not running into the helicopter propeller. Exactly. It happened at least three times. You're exactly right. The few times he did use his jab, he was still able to get off. Right. Jab right cross and that beautiful hook uh, to the body. I even talked to uh, De La Hoya about it afterwards and questioning Morales. And you know I love me some Eric yeah. Morales in his training, but should we get him a more defensive-minded kind of trainer? Is it too late to maybe sort of uh, uh, change his style and sort of approach? Because as you know, once you get hit, you're going to kind of resort to, yeah. to who you are. Look, selfishly, it's fun. I love the way yeah. he is. But if I'm uh, his 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 manager, then maybe I would like to be a little bit more. <sighs> and here's the thing: a little more defensive minded. But I don't even think it's so much that Kim as it is to. He, I think he just needs to utilize his jab, be disciplined in that distance, and get his shots off there. And Mario, I think it's unfair. 
on Morales. He was improving this kid for three, four fights. Yeah. Now, you know, he makes some judgment errors, tactical decisions that weren't really sound. I don't want to blame him. I think they had to get no. him back more active. Um, and here's the other thing with Derry Vachenko, tip of the cap. Anytime you fight, I'll tune in. All four yep. losses, he had great moments, and he is hard luck. Agree. Hard luck guy. Love that also, dude. Also, uh, a fight that was very tactical, the slick Sonny Edwards retains the IBF flyweight title against the very game Andres Campos, and there could be a unification bout against Bam Rodriguez. Can't wait for that one. Oh, that's one. a good one. Uh, also, Miami, Florida, Friday night. Adrian Broner with a 10-round decision over Bill Hutchinson. Now, Mario, you said last week, my idea of Broner facing Ryan Garcia is one of the worst I, ideas I that? that I ever had. I didn't say well, that. Well, you know who agreed with me? Oscar De La Hoya. Here, Oscar, here. you do your thing. Here, you first, keep promoting your ass off, first man. First of all, I never said that. So you're, you're, a, you're a liar face. I don't uh -huh. know if you have any friends other uh -huh. than me. And that's Don't give yourself too much that's credit there. You're really flattering yourself um, there. Jeez. No, listen. Oscar's <laughs> doing what he should and should be throwing a lot of names out there and and uh, uh, put yourself in a position where you can negotiate. You don't want to be handcuffed to like one guy because then you lose no. all your leverage right there. I like that fight uh, a it's lot. It's a fun fight. Fun it's promotion. A fun fight. fun Look, promotion. This is a fun era right now and a great time with lightweights and, and junior welterweights. Hopefully we'll get to uh, uh, mix them up. How did you think... Broner looked to like an older guy with a lot of miles on the odometer in and out of the ring that needed WD 40 uh, in the corner. Because again, ring rust was a thing five, six, seven years ago. Hutchinson doesn't make it past five. Right. But is he still marketable? Yes. Is he still a funny guy? Yes. Is he still a character? Yes. And if you're a bigger name looking for a little bit of juice in a promotion, I would dial up AB yeah. if it works, who's now with Don King. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. Uh, moving on to the fight preview. We talked about this earlier. Regis Pro Great takes on Daniel Zaria again on the zone. And make sure the zone is working properly. Get to that more later. But also, it's showtime from the Gold Coast in Australia for the WBO interim room title. Tim Zhu Lander takes on Carlos Ocampo. Mario, first of all, Tim Zhu, I think, is making the right move. He's not going to just wait around for Jermel Charlo. He's going to act like a fighter and work on his development. Good for him. And you know what I love? He was bitten by a dog about two weeks ago. Wait, and, what? And, and actually <laughs> put the fight in danger. Yeah. Wait, what? How, but no you know, backstory? What yeah, <laughs> yeah, a dog at a party, and it was kind of bad. But, you know, they did like a big. I'm not assuming yeah. like a shih tzu, right? Like a no, no, pit bull or something, know, right? I think it's like a bigger dog. And yeah. the fight was actually in danger, and they did an x-ray. And you know what they found that Tim Zhu had? The dog in him. He said, no, no, I'm going to fight. Oh I'm going to fight, dog. Yeah. I, I apologize to yeah. our listener. Damn. Uh, anyway, oh oh, there's God. a lot going on here. Oh. Um, this past Can we Saturday. Go to commercial or something? No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Um, this past weekend from Vancouver, UFC 289 <laughs> took place, and Amanda Nunez retained her titles with a dominant victory over Irene Aldana. I watched it very workmanlike, very methodical. She just wore her down, whether it was on the ground or whether they were out striking. This is what surprised me and maybe I shouldn't be, but fill me in. Nunez decides to retire. Are you surprised by that? Well, we'll talk about two fights because um, there was a co-main event with uh, Oliveira and uh, Darius, and then of course Aldana and uh, Nunez. I'm not surprised by this because there's there's nothing else for her uh, really left to accomplish. She's kind of cleaned out two two divisions, and those. Uh, divisions, Kim, as you know, uh, big gaps in between. We're not talking five, six pounds. We're talking like 15 <laughs> pounds, 20 pounds sometimes uh, in between. And she's, I think, goes down as the greatest female. Greatest. Fighter. I'm talking out of all of them. Of the all time. MMA quote. Really? Yeah. Not just Mount Rushmore. Quote. No. Listen, listen. I'd even go to say as far as combat athlete, because of the level of people that she's beat and in the fashion in which she's beat them, from Ronda Rousey to Holly Holm to Cyborg, Knocked them all out, choked them all out to Valentina Dushenko uh, uh, to um, even Aldana, hot up and cut her. The one um, loss she had as of late um, with uh, uh, the Vixen, Venezuela Vixen, she avenged that yep. loss too. Um, so there's really nothing left for her. I know she's got a little little baby, and there's really nothing left for her to um, to accomplish. And I think she's at the age too where she's you know maybe wanted to kind of sail off mm. to the sunset. But what? Yeah, she was completely dominant. Fully just uh, uh, awesome in every aspect of the game. Her striking, or her jujitsu, her grappling, her mind is always there. She's always in phenomenal mm. shape. So a tip of the hat to what I think is the quote in quote. MMA. The fight that a lot of people were really looking forward to, and I was actually um, 
surprised by the the result in the fashion in which it ended was Charles Oliveira, considered one of the greatest lightweights <clears throat> there, and their lightweights are 155, um, going up against Benil Darius, who was coming off a six-fight win streak. Darius was able to take him down. His jiu-jitsu was really strong, but for some reason, he didn't want to stay in the guard. People know what I'm talking about, jiu-jitsu, and he decided to get up. Well, once he got up, he that's where he was, his deficiencies were, or his striking wasn't as explosive as Oliveira's. And after like a head kick and some striking, he was able to... Um, he was able to get him down and and start hammer fisting him, and the ref stopped it because, as you know, these can mm, get yeah. stopped really quick. But had he stayed on the ground with him, <clears throat> where his strengths were, and maybe um, wore him down a little bit and got a little tired, I would, would have, I would have been interested to see, and I think it would have gave himself a better chance of victory because I don't know why he decided to go back. It was a weird strategy. Not to take anything away from Oliveira, but it was a weird strategy on Dariush's part. But both fighters, excellent fighters, and now we're going to see Oliveira probably against Makachev again and... He's going down as one of the greatest lightweights right there. So a lot of fights. My my iPad was working overtime watching all the fights uh, this weekend. Okay, sometimes you got to know who you are and what you are. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And play to your strengths. You're exactly right. When you start thinking, that's well put. All right. So anyway, we come back after these uh, words from our fine, friendly sponsor. We wrap it up with final flurries and ask Mario on the three knockdown rule. Mario segment. Uh, Mario, this one's from Bob. This is interesting. What's up, Bob? Uh, what's next for Tio? Does he stay with top rank? Well, no. He, he's retired. The, the takeover, it's yeah, over. It was a good it. run. I'm going to remember it fondly. It was a great run. Uh, five years from now, he'll be on the Hall of Fame ballot. Yeah. Who's, that, who's that band that keeps retiring and then they come back? Rolling Stones. What are those Stones? Uh, Motley. Motley Crue. Yeah, he's like Motley Crue, Rolling Stone. My guy retires. I don't know if this is negotiating tech. Look, I love me some teal, but my guy says some some wild stuff and uh, puts it out there. Why would you want to retire when you when you could potentially make your biggest payday? Um, a, a coming up next. Well, no, 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 no. But all he wants, but just a simple yeah, nine figure right. contract. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, then he'd all of a sudden <laughs> find the motivation. But look, that's aggressive. <laughs> he's going through a child custody battle, yeah. and I'm assuming a divorce. Don't wish it, that on anybody. Right. Um. And then, look, he feels as though he's underpaid, but I think there's a realization here. He lost to Cambosis, so that set him back. He's not fighting in the biggest venues, but now he's a star. My, my view is, you know what, focus on parlaying and really not squandering this victory like you did against Lomachenko. Listen, there's no, right. there's no, hopefully, prayers up, no pandemic that's going to hit right now, and we won't be in a bubble. Things aren't going to be thrown into a whirlwind, and, and, and a monkey wrench won't get tossed in. If he's able to stay focused and stay disciplined and and fight, I don't think he suffered too much. He had a little bit of a cut, yeah. I think, but um, and and uh, get another fight in before the end of the year, which is obviously very realistic. I think the sky's the limit for a lot of potential lucrative matches matchups for him, and I would have to favor him against anyone at 140. And I don't, and that's including guys who come up from 135. Wow. Even if it's the fighter that I see. That was in there Saturday night. You tell me who's going to... Listen, he, the speed and the power... The reflexes. The reflexes. Who? Let me ask you, look at this. Tank comes up. Do you favor him against Tank? Tank will not fight him in a million years at 140. That's what I'm not saying. Not that version. I, no, let's put it hypothetically. Because a guy... Let me... T you stay in front of Tio... You stay in and front you pitch of... pitch fastballs? Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. No, that's it. I, I don't think anybody hangs... I think he's stronger than all those guys. I think he's stronger just as fast, if not faster... 
I'm telling you, Kim, I like, and that's a talent laden division, both 35 and 40, but I would have to favor him against those very talented fighters. Right. And you, we cannot forget Subriel Matias, who's an absolute meat grinder. He is, but we don't know what. But again, that style, uh, trust me, he but, might get shredded by Tio. Well, that's what I'm saying. You stay in front of him, you're going to be trying to stay in the pocket. Ooh, I feel sorry for you. Here's one from Fanny Merchant, the only Sanch asked that Torta Kingpin Mario Lopez. Does he want Tio to unify next or go for the big money fight against fellow mental health excuse maker? Ryan Garcia. Cold what a harsh ice, harsh. Cold wow. Ice. Um, wow. I don't think you can go wrong either one. I mean, obviously, I, listen, I don't think Oscar's going to let Ryan get anywhere near Teal right now. Look, in a perfect world, I think Ryan fights Raleigh, gets a belt, Teal unifies, then they fight. Mm. That'd be that'd be uh, uh, an exciting I, uh, thing for the division. But I do wonder about Ryan's relationship with Golden Boy and yes. where it is. I think that's a situation to kind of monitor. We will monitor. Here's a question from Adam Lopez. How much credit do you give guys who were either robbed or very unfortunate in big fights when ranking them at their pound-for-pound pound list or legacy? Things like Golovkin against Canelo, Chocolatito versus Estrada 2, or more historically, Oscar versus Tito. Great question. I don't I don't knock them for it. I kind of go 1A if you were going to do to one. Me it, one a. it does matter. You know, well, what matters in what sense? Um, you got to have some context. Like when I look at Pernell Whitaker in my right, own right, no, view, right, exactly. I give saying. him credit for the way he fought and forget the result of the Chavez fight right. or Jose Luis Ramirez. Sure. Jose Luis Castillo, in my view. And, and first of all, congratulations to the 2023 class of Hall of Famers yes. that were just inducted. Congrats. All of them. It's a great honor. Yep. Jose Luis Castillo, if he gets that win over Mayweather in that first fight, which I thought he won. In Most my view, people. I still vote for him. When I voted, I voted for him every single I year. Agree. And for some reason, he's forgotten about. But again, if he was the guy to beat Mayweather way back in 2002, I think he's in Canastota years ago, Mario. I agree. You know what I think hurts him too, though? All those weight um, misses. At the end. The mishaps. the end, yes. And I it's think held against he, him. There's no I doubt. Do, I know. That, and that's unfortunate. Yes. Uh, here's one from Matt Matt. Josh Taylor looked really old and slow in the Tio fight after a 16-month layoff. Do you think there's any chance of Spence looking just as bad against Bud with his extended layoff? Listen, first of all, I disagree with that. I was right there. You couldn't get closer. He didn't look old or slow to me. I think Tio, again, was just that much faster and better that night. I think Josh, when he goes up to 47, which he says, I think he's going to have sturdier legs. I think he might even look better. Look, I think, I think he's going to be ordinary. I think he's no. I I, I don't see. I, I give credit. I th I still think he's a hell of a fighter. And look, is he in the back side of his career? Yes, but I don't think he can take away um, a lot of those advantages he, in length uh, and size dissipate at forty seven. And by the way, as it relates to Bud and Spence, one of the reasons why I am going with Crawford, I'll get on the record right now, um, is ring rust and recent activity. Yes. Look, I agree with that as well. And look, I always, I always uh, was sort of leaning towards Crawford from the beginning, but I think the time off, or pardon me, the time in between the fight was first sort of mentioned is sort of going to maybe help out Spence a little bit. That's another one that's going to be an uh, intriguing, fascinating fight. Here's one from the Filthy Casual, Azabachi 137. Does Derry Vachenko's controversial loss to Munguia now make him a credible opponent to Janibek? who's devoid of such a thing. Mm. And I think that Lopez versus Cambosis too in Australia would be a great fight for Teal and a very good payday via Australian pay-per-view. Do you guys agree? First of I, all, if you lined up Derevichenko for Janabek, I'd have no issues. No, and I think uh, Derevichenko, uh, I, I, listen, uh, if I'm a network, I want to see that guy fight again. And it's one of those situations where you, you may have lost – the fight, but you still sort of won in the court yeah. of public opinion and your stock didn't drop at all. Um, with that said, I don't have any desire to see T.O. and Cambosis. What? I, I really don't. Because the there's so many other fights to be made right now. Really? I, mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I'm saying it wouldn't be my, it wouldn't be on my, my Mount okay. Rushmore okay. of fights no, no, for no, him no. to take but, next. But keep this in mind. You know, boxing politics expunges a lot of potential matchups or they delay them. Cambosis just recently signed a multi-fight deal with Top rank. Keep that in mind. No, so the I'm makeability, not, and a, I think there's a storyline there. Of course, Kim, but you're telling me you'd rather see that than him no. against Devin Haney no, no, or him I'm, against Regis Progray or him against Ryan Garcia. That's what I'm agreed, saying. Agreed, but— Okay, well, that's all I'm saying. Cambosis Lopez, I think, would be very compelling based on It'd what happened. It'd be my happened. fourth or fifth fight that I'd want to see him face. Wouldn't it be yours? Okay, but he's going to—well, he's retired, so why are we even talking about T.O.? Yeah, uh, anyway— You know I'm right. <laughs> moving on. Final flurries. The final flurries. Can we have a moment of silence and have a big camel clutch in the sky? <laughs> Rest in peace, 
to the Iron Sheik. Just 80 like, slow clap. And as he would say, the big Iran, Iran, number one, USA. <laughs> I don't know that? if you no. know this, but he was an actual legitimate a wrestler good one, a and really Olympian. Good one. Yes. yes, a really, really good one. And that's our childhood right there. When Hulk Hogan faced the Iron Sheik. Okay, who did he beat Iron Sheik to get the title? See how much of a WWE guy you are. Oh, I man, know. I can't remember. I remember Classy Freddy Blassie was his manager. Who Bob Backlund. Oh, wow. Damn. We're that old? Damn. I know my WWF. Damn. I'm that's I'm crazy. I'm a historian. Dude, and he sort of had like a second stretch of a career with... Um, uh, social media. Just he was, Twitter. It was so funny on Twitter. You big Jabroni. He's great, man. Rest in peace to him. The Hulkster gave him a lot yeah. of love too. I, I've on read social. that he really was patriotic. He loved America. Yeah. He loved the country and what it brought to Most him. Most immigrants that come yes. here do. And to that salute, <laughs> yep. salute. Uh, Mario, are you? Did you get asthma or did you get any type of uh, sickness from breathing that New York air last? What was it like last week in the Big Apple? Yo, did you see Blade Runner? Do you yeah. remember the sky and Blade Runner? <laughs> that's that's what it looked like. You know when they depict the Middle East in yeah. films with like a haze and, and like it's a all yellow. Sandy, yeah. yeah, it looks like a filter. <laughs> that's what it looked like in New York. When I got there, it was bad. And I was like, whoa. Um and I guess the day prior it was even it was even worse. It slowly started to dissipate. Thank God. I thought I wasn't gonna be able to get out there. And I went out there for the Tribeca Festival. We were we were able to kick off the documentary that I talked about last week with De La Hoya, to rave reviews. So thank you, Variety and Hollywood Report and all the people that gave us rave reviews. I'm so excited for people to to check it out. I think they're going to be blown away. It's going to, I can officially say, drop uh, July 24th on HBO. Uh, can't wait sure to, to see check it. Out. A lot I of can't good wait things. for you to check it out. So that was fun, man. Came on the heels of that. Uh, and from New York, came and did the uh, Mario Lopez Golf Classic 4th Four. Annual. So much fun. That's what I'm feeling and looking uh, rough today. The weather held up. Wait, LA turned into Seattle. We're yeah, like when London we, out when, here. When am I getting my 85 degree weather? You, you know here? what this What's means? I know your chanclas are getting oh, dust on them. Oh, Listen, you know you know what that means? That means it's going to be hot till, till like November. Oh, Thanksgiving and tank top. I don't, oh, up top, oh, up top. No, yeah, up, oh, top. Oh, oh, up top. I like the fall. I don't want no up top. I like it to. Be, I like it going holiday, getting yeah. cold. I want the summer to be the summer, and then you yeah, know, it's going to be hot all way till the end of the year. Just to rewind a little bit, my message to Canada, to quote Smokey the Bear, only you can prevent forest fires. Uh, anyway. Oh, um, my God. But real quick, I just want to give a shout-out to St. Joseph, Providence St. Joseph Hospital and all the people and sponsors who helped out raising money for the Children's Hospital over there. My kids were born. Great cause. It was a great cause. So thank you. Next year, you should come, your ambassador. And Mario, one last thing. Uh, be honest. Were you able to actually watch the last six rounds of Dervichenko Munguia? We had some issues there with the oh, zone. bro. Because I tweeted to the zone. I said, hey, zone, what... Uh, what gives? I came yeah. to watch the fight. Could I had just it stopped that I had it even six. going yeah. into the seventh, and you guys, it cut off. And uh, my buddy and I were trying to figure it out. And DAZN wrote back, Hi, Mario. Thank you so much for letting us know about this. Our tech teams are working hard to resolve this issue. We'll message you as soon as we have an update. Thank you. And then they messaged me again. Hi, Mario. The full fight is available to view now. Smiley face emojis. Apologies for any inconvenience. VIP hope, here. Hope you enjoy. VIP. We're going to fix that. that for Lopez. Hey, look at that. Uh, I want to say so one thing about... Out. A lot of people had issues, right? They do, but I will say one thing about the zone that I like, and it's better than, I would say, ESPN+. Plus. I want to give them some credit because we know we put them under the bus a little bit. I love the fact that when you watch their replays, you can go 30 seconds ahead or behind just by pressing a button. Also, when a complete fight card is done... There's a tab where you can go to the exact fight that you want, mm -hmm. and they'll give you options like where do you want to start it. So there's a lot of good things about sure. the zone. When it works. When it works. And when they're not charging you eight times for a pay-per-view. But outside yep. of that, I'm a happy customer. Yeah. Their Yelp review, I'm gonna, I'm still going to give them a four and a half and a okay. five. Okay. Um, please, no more price raises. I mean, i got to work a second job here. But anyway, a lot of things to talk about. Next week, we'll be back. Got a lot on the docket on behalf of our sponsors. And again, one last uh, reminder, if you'd like to get involved with the Three Knockdown Rule and sponsor our fine program, we still have slots available. Please reach out to us by emailing info at boxbid.io. Once again, that is info at boxbid.io. Boxbid.io is an online platform that is launching soon that helps public figures and professionals in the world of boxing get sponsorships. We are proudly working with boxbid.io. So, all right. So, on behalf of Mario Lopez, Tim Frazier, Tino, this is Steve Kim saying... Goodbye, everybody.